This is Twit. Let me welcome to the show Mr. Dave Signori from Infoblox. He runs strategy for network automation and discovery at that company. Now, he was a CTO of a network automation startup until it was acquired back in 2007. Uh, he owned the network automation and orchestration roadmap at that acquiring company until 2013 when he decided to move to Infoblox, where they were still invest investing in exciting things for the burgeoning network automation market. Mr. Signori, thank you very much for coming onto This Week in Enterprise Tech. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me, Father Robert. Good now, to be here. You are on vacation right now, which kind of blows me away. Uh, you gave up some of your vacation time to, to be on our show? Absolutely. I wouldn't miss this. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad to have you on the show because network automation is one of those topics that we bring up every once in a while. It gets people excited and then it kind of falls off because it's still a little nebulous. We kind of understand mm -hmm. what network automation is. We kind of understand the values. But what would be your 45-second pitch? To, to an executive who maybe isn't that tech savvy, how would you convince him or her that network automation is something that that enterprise definitely needed to, to invest in? Yeah, the reason you need to invest in it is because all the things that network automation does, like uh, detecting change, uh, making changes to network devices, ensuring that you have standardized configs, your network operations team is probably doing that today already, and they're using manual means or they're using scripting. And if you automate all that, you free them up to do much more strategic things. So your the ROI analysis, you just save a ton of money because you're 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 paying them to work on strategic things versus the day to day. So it's really it's it's really an ROI thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, someone once uh, uh, gave me uh, sort of the, the layman's explanation of network automation. They said, well, imagine that you've got a bunch of screens and if the screen turns red, then there's something wrong. And you have to pay people to watch the screen to see if it turns red and then they report it to somebody else. If, with network automation, you have one person watching all the screens and the network automation tells him or her what's gone wrong in the network. That's what you want. You want all of the scut work and all of the grunt work to be done by some sort of bot, by some sort of automation, so that the people who are skilled can actually be skilled. Yeah, that's right, exactly. So when you have the automation set up and uh, something is detected that has gone wrong, like there's just a configuration error or default passwords are found somewhere on a network device, those can be corrected automatically. And then you're just notified, hey, we made this correction. Right. But really where a lot of the ROI is, is in um, pushing changes out. Right? It's not uncommon for our customers to do uh, an update to 45,000 network devices of the local password or of a SNMP community name change. And if you were to do that with manual means or scripting, it would take you multiple weekends. And with automation, it's now done uh, quickly and, and not in a manual fashion. So, so you're, uh, you're gaining ROI on that. Okay, well, we, we have to back into that because uh, I can't <laughs> just say, oh, let's get rid of scripting, let's get rid of the, the CLI, let's get rid of uh, manual input because I am part of that generation that has yeah. muscle memory. I know all the commands. I know what I need to run. And I can do it relatively quickly. I mean, I can drill down through my networks and I can find out exactly what's wrong and I know exactly which script I need to run. Why, why do I need automation? How do you sell automation to me? Right, so... So you can get in trouble with when you're just using CLI. I mean, first of all, you could just simply fat finger something, right? You remember the Amazon S3 yeah, yeah. down uh, when it went down in, in, in March? That was what? That was, that was fat, like one was, keystroke? I think it was just one, just one, one keystroke. keystroke. Yeah. Right. That, that was brought down because of a fat finger, right? So because they weren't using automation, it was a CLI. But also you might, you might make a change that you forget to save, right? So the change gets lost when the network device reboots. Right, you could be making changes in just different ways across different network devices, and you're not standardizing. Right, the leading cause to this day of any network problem that happens is still network change. Yeah. Right, and that uh, that can get you in trouble with the CLI. But as far as the scripting goes, a lot of times the scripting, uh, you're writing it specifically for uh, a particular type of device. Right, there's no standardization on that, uh, and then you don't have record of the credentials you're supposed to use in a single spot. Um, you don't have a record of what the configuration used to look like, right? You scripted, it, it makes the change, but what did it used to look like? So if change is your leading 
cause of a problem, you obviously need to keep track of all the changes that happen on the network. Change uh, happens, causes a problem. You go back to see what it used to look like. You can back that change out. Or at least you can go and, and see who the person was that made the change, who was the engineer, when they did it, and then you can have a conversation with them. So, uh, so automating the change management is, uh, is uh, I mean, it's increasing your uptime and it's saving you money.